Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Yes, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlamagne the God, Angela Yee, DJ Envy is off today, but we got the host of one of my favorite podcasts, man. Ryan Clark, Fred Taylor, and Channing Crowder. The Pivot Podcast is here. <laughs> <laughs> What's, up, What's happening? Man, What's appreciate you having us, baby. How y'all we, we feeling this morning? We end up using a lot of your clips on Rumor Report. A I lot. I just want to say. Oh, we, appreciate oh, we appreciate that. that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> a lot lately. I really appreciate what y'all are doing, man, because I think it's dope when people who actually lived it control their own narratives. Mm -hmm. So what made y'all want to do this? Said, Go ahead, like, you know. Quiet. You started. <laughs> you got shit. We had to get away from the other situation. I remember that. You know what I'm saying? And um, we didn't know what we were going to do. We just weren't going to stay over there. Mm -hmm. And then Channing and I, we talked. And then eventually we had a conversation with RC. And then, you know, we had to pivot from there. And we ended up with the pivot. Because you, so, you, you, you already was doing one, right? Yeah, so I was so I was, was doing, doing something. 10. I was doing something. Okay. Yeah, I was doing something on my own mm -hmm. already just because I was just trying to get the reps of interviewing, doing those things, telling telling certain stories and I did the old show with them. Mm -hmm. They needed a guest host, somebody was missing. So I did the old show, it went really well. Um, and then Alicia uh, Zubakowski, who's the producer, she just hit me up like, would you do the show? Would you talk to Channing? Me and Chan talked for about an hour and a half one night, you know, because my, my first question was, can y'all fix the old thing? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I think anytime like in our culture, when something does become that big mm -hmm. and it does become something that the community grabs onto, like I didn't want that to just go away behind nonsense, right? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, once they let me know what the deal was and how everything went down, I was like, cool, let's do it. But I can honestly say I didn't expect it to be what it is now, though, for sure. Really? It's so important to take care of the business, too, mm -hmm. aspect of it. So when you guys did the Pivot Podcast, what agreement did you come to with each other to make sure that it was fair for everybody? Oh uh, Well, we learned from the, from the other, other situation where you just jump out with your homeboys. Hey, we tight, we played together, we know each other, man, let's do this. And then it blows up, and then checks start coming, and now you're panicking on the back end. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, what percentage is mine? What percentage is yours? Mm -hmm. So before we even shot an episode, we set up our business, set up our LLC, our big one. We connected all three of our businesses to it. We brought in our producer and our attorney. So everybody got their, you know, their, it's not equal percentage. We're the, we're the main three owners. We mm -hmm. own, what is 80% of it. Mm -hmm. And then, so that's already set up before a dime came in. So we, we were fronting money. All of us were paying for our own stuff to yeah. start it, to get it going, to travel, the production, and everything with our producer. And we were paying for it ourselves and said, okay, we're going to bet on ourselves to come in. But we didn't even, we left the other spot. Me and Freddie were like, we got to do a podcast. <laughs> but then we just saw, man, it's, it's, the, it's the young kids that come up to you. From the 14-year-old that come and be like, hey, man, that Beasley stuff was crazy. To the 60-year-old that comes up to you. So mm -hmm. we're really affecting the culture. So that's what me and Freddie were like. But we got to keep this going somehow to really just speak to the people. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to bring in a third. And the list was short. It was Ryan Clark. We knew the dude. He's, he's talented. He was that good guy. So that's what we brought in. But yeah, we didn't. We didn't have to do it. We didn't want to. Just want to do it. But we had to because we just saw. We thought we were affecting so many people. Well, you know, I'm glad you said that because coming from pro sports, y'all make multi millions of dollars. Podcast money ain't like that initially. <laughs> yeah, not sure. at all. And it might take a, a while to even get to that multi millions of dollars. So did that impact anything? No, nah, not for me. Okay. Like I said, it's all about teaching. You know, being transparent and learning, and just really opening up conversations i think that's what we we've been great at and uh really just jumping in it we we started the other thing just during quarantine mm -hmm. say we were bored in the house we just trying to get outside and you know do some stuff talk and then it just evolved into that uh for me i never thought i'd be in media right so um just to really be here it's still i, I think my drive now is the fact that like Channing just said people run up on us damn yeah, I changed my life, the DMs. Man, that right there opened my eyes. Man, I need this, you know, this medicine. So that keeps you driving. So, uh, and it really, the money's gonna come on the back end. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We can sustain this. So that's not the important thing right now. It's just the conversation. If you if you chase the money, you'll never catch it. That's right. Yeah, I think the the other piece of it is too, though, like from a, the, the money standpoint, I know for me, it's about getting an opportunity to get out of a box. Mm -hmm. Like I... I got to the point I hated media, right? Because, you know, you, you're on the show and you play football and they're like, okay, let's just talk about football, mm -hmm. right? Or it's, you know what I'm saying, or it's 2016 and people know that you have a certain thought about social injustice. You have a certain thought about protest, certain thought about police brutality, and they can just say, we won't ask you, mm -hmm. right? And so you, you were kind of put in this box to where you couldn't be 
all that you were, mm -hmm. right? Like I can host a show, I can control conversation. And so for me, it was about being in the space to tell stories I wanted to, to tell or to allow people to tell stories I thought were important in our way. And I think like that was the cool part for me. And, you know, like I always tell them, like you know, every call we're on, there's a joke, as Fred says it more than anything. We know RC don't care about this part when we start mm -hmm. talking about money. Because mm -hmm. I feel like if we make good content, if we treat people the right way, eventually you'll make money. That's right. But if we're not focused on making the best content and putting out the best show, if it is, we got to do this because that's where the money is. One, we'll never be happy. And two, we'll never make enough money if that's what we're chasing. That's right. What you said about athletes being in a box, do you think that's where the stereotype of the dumb jock comes from? Because they don't, they don't, they only want to talk to y'all about one thing? Well, I don't think it's necessarily like, like that's where the dumb jock comes from because I think some jocks are dumb just like, <laughs> no, just like anybody's dumb. Right. Yeah. Anybody dumb. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's people that play ball that's not, that was yeah. really good at ball and also not very intelligent. Like, that's... And, and, and mm -hmm. so I think... And so I think people try to, like, stereotype everyone in that way. But I think it's, it's much like... It's much like anything else is where, like, where people see you and box you in or how they meet you, it's hard for them to get outside of that, mm -hmm. right? Like, if you're not like having... that's all you do. Right, like, if you're not having a conversation <laughs> with us, like, if you never sit down and bring up another topic, then you don't know what the hell I know. Right. And, like, this show has let us do that. Let right. me ask you this. So, when you guys first started this podcast, right, and you did the first episode where you kind of addressed everything, have you guys, like, made amends with your prior situation or do you think there'll ever be a time that you guys all talk and and do something and address it because um i never say never you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. life moves on and different things happen but as we say here today i don't i don't believe so i just think there was so much disrespect with with the other situation you know not even business-wise just as a man you know the way people would talk to the way people are approached that you just, I know I felt disrespected. And I speak for Freddie. I know Freddie felt disrespected. RC wasn't a part of us. He kind of came in on the back end. Mm -hmm. But just the disrespect and the approach to me as a, as a grown-ass man, I don't think I could, I could really go back to that situation and, and look at that individual the same way. Yeah, no, it's crazy it all worked out for the best. He said, no, yeah. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But what was it, though? Because it couldn't have been money. Because, you know, I'm sure it wasn't a lot of money rolling in at the time. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't the money, but again, this is a long game situation. Mm -hmm. You know the residual effects of of this mm -hmm. the content ain't going nowhere. I love it when mm -hmm. I right. love it when you try to fight <laughs> saying what the hell you really want to say. <laughs> no, and I'm you, telling hey, you, because it wasn't about the money. Smooth, oh, it's, it's, about, smooth. it's about the structure, yeah. right? right? So mm -hmm. when we all came into it, it was this, and then it evolved into something else that was gonna put said individual to the front, and he was gonna capitalize. You know, so it was a podcast. Then eventually became, oh, this is going to be a media arm for my stuff, my gym, et cetera. Got you. Mm -hmm. That wasn't a situation. Whether you say this was my vision, that wasn't a vision we all talked about, right? So we all came to the table. Personally, myself, personally, I'm not speaking for Chan. I said, my sweat equity, don't pay me. I don't want no talent fee. I want my sweat equity to travel as the company grow. My sweat gonna grow. So at the end of the day, when it's time to identify what that looked like, it wasn't five percent. You feel me? Absolutely. If I if my sweat is fifty k, and you put in a hundred k, to me that looked like a third of the uh, other situation. Absolutely. I know the math. So about twenty six, twenty seven percent after everybody chopped. That wasn't it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, nah. You know, I'm I'm fighting my words. I, said, F, I was about to say F this, yeah. but uh, yeah, no. Nah, so that was it for me. So my decision was easy. I just sat tight for a little bit uh, because it was some other things that I was shooting for. You know, we talked about Hall of Fame and all of this stuff. So different messages was able to come out. So mm -hmm. I just sat back and said, I'm gonna take advantage for now. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, I'm paying attention. You know, and and I make a move when it's time to make a move. I love so many of y'all episodes, man. You know, Channing, people got mad at you when you mm -hmm. called uh, Russell Wilson a square. Do you take that back? Not at all. Not <laughs> one bit. I, you know what? I did. <laughs> I did. You know what I'm saying? I did creep in the G-Code locker room, bring it up Sierra, and why they're together. You know what I'm saying? And Fred, actually, Fred and RC, afterwards, they got on me like, bro, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> she wanted her piece. You know, you can transition. You know, go to different situations. Kim. From Kanye to David, what's his name? Pete Samson? Davidson. Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson. I don't follow that, man. But, like, they're two different people. So I understand the change. So bringing up Sierra, bringing up a man's family, I'll take that back. Mm -hmm. 
But have y'all seen Russell's videos? You've seen Men's Turn Land it, and this goofy shit. He, my bad. Listen, but there's... But, no, no, no. But, there's but, nothing wrong with being a square, though. I know. That's what I'm saying. I didn't, what, call, I didn't call him alcoholic. That's a positive thing to me, really. But like, I think, I think though... But you said you didn't call him alcoholic. I, I didn't call him alcoholic. I didn't call him a deadbeat <laughs> dad. I didn't call him a pedophile. Some people felt like it was... Per, some people felt like it was personal. Like, you have a personal issue with him. No, no, no. There, I, there's lame people all around, I think. And I'll call them lame. <laughs> you ask throw a name out. I say lame or cool. It's an opinion. Oh and it's yeah, what yeah, I yeah. thought. Like... It's folks that think I'm lame, and I don't give a damn. Yeah. I don't know why so many people were mad that my opinion of Russell Wilson is a square and a lame. But that's what happens when you have a successful podcast, but you say holds a lot more weight than just having a regular conversation. But, but also, if, I guess, look a person that people look at and they say, that's a good guy. Right. Why is a good guy considered lame? There's good people that are cool. Yeah. Just the way Russ holds himself, his little videos, you saw him come <laughs> up, you see how his... He done been in a locker room with people that know how to talk to talk to. He learned how to talk to talk, but he's he's not built like that. Chad, I'm, Chad I'm an Atlanta understand. dude, man. I'm an Atlanta dude, and I, that's how I He doesn't up. understand who in the black community is protected. Certain people you can't say certain things about, and that's beautiful black love. You can't violate that. Yeah, you know but what I'm saying? I think— But he spoke his opinion, so that's one thing Chan ain't going to do. Mm -hmm. You watch the episodes, Chan ain't going to be black and white. Ain't no great about Chan. It's going to always be transparent. You're going to like it or you're not. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's really, that's it. And it works. Yeah. It, it wasn't, though. It, it wasn't what people tried to make it, though. And I think that was that, that was my larger issue. And you got it. And you, I mean, you for sure know. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you say certain things and you may not expound and people bring it to something else, right? Because, obviously, if I'm connected to him and I'm laughing during the time and even in the piece I said I was like bro but when you've been in something that's toxic you just want peace you want the like, opposite yeah, yeah even like even I said that, that but I nowhere. also agree that he's square and I think the, the thing that frustrated me you know the thing that frustrated me is not like now people are coming at us like you can't say anything about it because of the couple mm -hmm. right it's because of the couple and like I had the conversations with people which I love being able to have those conversations I was like look you know in 2016, when Michael Bennett's walking off the stage in a Black Lives Matter shirt, and they asked Russell Wilson, he says, police lives matter, and everybody's lives matter. Of course, black lives matter. Lord, you know what mercy. I'm saying? And so at that time, at that time, like, I, I went on TV that day. I'm on first take. I went on TV like, nah, like, we needed somebody to be strong. Mm -hmm. and, and to me, it's like, okay... And then in 2020, and like things change and your minds change and, you know, you're now married to a black woman and you have black kids. And so, you know, now those things are important. In 2020, he gives this impassioned speech on the ESPYs. And, that, and that's cool, right? But for me, somebody who's the same way in 16 and, and white people are cussing me, calling me racist. And then in 2020, I'm getting calls every time I get off a of TV that my voice is needed. That is square to me, mm -hmm. right? And so, and so I think... It, it, it's okay to say that and also say, you know what, my daughter, I want her to marry a man that loves her, her the way he seems to love Sierra and take care of his kids, not only his kids, her other kid. Like, all those things are beautiful. And I wanted to be a black man. That should yeah. be okay to say, too. Yeah, yeah. you know what yeah. I'm saying? So I think that, I just think that, you know, th that thing was taken way out of, like, context. And I hated that he got killed for it and his wife was getting messages and and, and different my daughter's getting messages really and I, yeah and so I, I thought that you know like come on now like know who you defended how and do you that, play with a square oh go ahead first no I was gonna say even in that same clip though <laughs> two out of three of us he said women don't want toxicity I said women want peace they pull what he said out that's that's what we did that's the environment so. mm -hmm. Nothing. You said, how do you play? Yeah, how do you play with a square? Like, if a person, like, if you know, you already told the person, man, you square as hell. How do y'all? He real good. Oh. You want to win. I used to, I used to do it all the time in the locker room. Really? Dude come in. I see how he move for a week. Yeah, I ain't fooling with him. He, he, he'll funny act and he'll tear the coat some. He'll dry snitch. Like, you just see it. <laughs> and you be like, I'm not fooling him. You go out there and do your job. You playing mm -hmm. next to me. We communicate. You cover your dude. I cover my dude. All that. But when we leave this field, Hey, bro, you want to grab a beer? Hell no, I'm not going to get a beer with you. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no way. If you going west, I'm going east. <laughs> and that's, that's the crazy thing, too. You bring it up, uh, Charlemagne. We interviewed two of his former teammates. They, they haven't been dropped yet. Probably, I don't know if they'll get dropped or not. But Chan asked him, did, did he call you? Did you call him when y'all went to the bar or whatever? And everybody said no. Damn. And I and I and I know Russ and uh, I'm, we cool. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I wouldn't call him a square, but again, 
what I call Russ the Hank to to go out, I would hit I me personally, I would hit Russ. The guys I'm with would probably be like, man, what the fuck you hitting Russ for? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's what a teammate said. So, or, you know, to each his own, bro. And the Michael Beasley episode, man, that was so important. And I don't I don't think he would have gotten that open anywhere else. For some reason, he felt very comfortable in that environment. Have y'all followed up with him since then? I hit him constantly. I have a lot of blue texts, though. And and he does he hasn't really returned anything, but like right. I repost this stuff. Um, I text him all the time just to check on him. Mm-hmm. And I think it's, you know, for, for us, it was one of those things, I was, honestly, y'all, that, like, we weren't expecting. Like, mm-hmm. when he came on, like, Chan and, and Fred had to go, like, talk to him to just get him to do the show. Kind of had, like, just... Because when you, when you get to our show, it's kind of, like, not just a regular podcast. There's t- cameras everywhere and people moving around. And so, you know, he didn't want to do it initially. Mm-hmm. And, like, through the first few minutes, we didn't know what it was going to be. And for him to open up in, in that way... Like you almost felt like you almost felt ill equipped for it. And I think that's why it ended up being so beautiful was because we all had to like just strip down and just be there with mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. And uh it was like honestly, I, I think it, it's the it's the interview that when people talk about where our show has come to this point, the interview everybody will point to, because I believe that's kind of what started the pivot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, he uh we I done reached out to him twenty times and he didn't respond back. And just random, like he just got on the team. He just signed a deal in what China, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh Call wow! Him. Congratulations! You oh, know what dope, dope. Yep. Yeah, let me, you know, let me know. Just like on the show when I told him, bro, I got kids. We get the bounce house in the backyard mm-hmm. every time we had a party. I reach out to the man. Hey, bro, having something Saturday? A couple times I did it, no response. But when you when you want help, you reach out for it. Mm-hmm. And everybody hit us like this man needs help. Um, psychiatrists would DM me. Doctors mm-hmm. I know DM me. Hey, can you please get in touch with Michael Bees? I'm like, listen, I'm not giving this man number to you, but I'll keep reaching out to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And at any moment he does respond, you ready? I'll holler at him and I'll have a team ready to do something for him. But just wish him the best. But I know we all reached out to him a number of times. Yeah. So what was that conversation to even get him to do it initially? A couple friends, a couple people mm-hmm. I reached out to. Mm-hmm. We talked about doing it when we were on the other side, but um, that was shot down. So Thank God it was. And uh, really when he came, like RC said, he had some reservations because the camera was like, oh, this look like ESPN mm-hmm. set up. Um, but he got down, took a shot or two, got comfortable. And um, shit, we just opened it up. We just opened it up and just let him speak. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the beauty about what we do. Like, we just let people speak. Mm-hmm. Some people come with agendas and they have things that they want to vent to and get off their chest. And then we're going to do enough research where we can expound and we can carry a conversation. So I think really that's what creates our, our dynamic. One, guess no, we're going to do right by them. Mm-hmm. We, ain't, we ain't looking for no clickbaits. We just looking to let you talk. We'll let you see the, 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 the cuts before we send them out, all mm-hmm. the promos. You sign off on them, we good to go. Has anyone ever said, can you take this out? Yeah. 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 We have a we have a show we have a show that we can't release because <laughs> because the guests come right I always hey can I ask this right because you you know you study and you know you know what you want to get to and if you get to it you you will and so I'm like can I ask this can I ask this they was like oh yeah like we all good so I was like this is gonna be an excellent show <laughs> we do the show show's phenomenal I get a call from my agent my TV agent and he's like look their agent called me they need to take some things out. And when people take things out, y'all know how it is. You take, like, a snippet out, Mm -hmm. or you might take one answer out. They took out, like, 20 minutes of a 45-minute show. Oh, he must have got loose. Oh, she must have got loose. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? (laughs) And and I was like, well, we can't show this. That's my 12-minute episode. But but it's also one of those things, though, like, when I look back on it, I think it's I think it's even cool, though, that that we could be in that. But we could be that way. Like, if you feel that... um, and they have a doc, a documentary coming out, so I guess they thought they shared too much. But if you feel like you did something on the show and, you know, you got to take so much out, we're not going to put you out there bad. We're not right. going to be like, nah, you said it, we're going to do it, you signed a release. Nah, we're not going to do that because you, you don't want that to be attached to your name either. And to be honest, um, they done told stuff I done done on the show. We'll stop the show afterwards and our producer and Freddie <laughs> and RC be like, hey, that mid part with Chan, we don't even do that. <laughs> Like what? Yeah, just you know, I I get wild with the sexual <laughs> stuff, or just you know, just start talking crazy, talking about you know back in the day when I used to run in them streets, and then after the show, as soon as it's over, ready to be like, RC, we can't play this stuff nah. about the club, <laughs> and then the producer be like, okay, and she'll edit it up and be right. But yeah, from on all our standpoints, like we're we're not 
we're not there to get anybody. Right. Yeah. And I think that's what people gather. And a lot of people, one thing I was surprised by is that when people come on, they're always going to watch shows before. Mm -hmm. They always want to see what to expect mm -hmm. when they get there. So they already know his approach. They know mm -hmm. my approach. They know Freddie's approach. So they already are kind of prepared. But if they were to say something crazy, we'll even, in the middle of the show sometimes, we'll be like, they'll talk. It was a show recently, and dude said something, and Fred was like, you don't oh, I do that, that all the time, yeah. I, yeah. I, I tell the guests right now, I'll be like, oh, you know we editing that, right? Yeah. Because yeah. like, you already know they're going to, why, why give somebody unnecessary backlash yeah. with no reason? Yeah. You know what I mean? You had a nice moment with Shaq, too. Yeah, yeah. See, the funny thing was Shaq, he came in shooting. Yeah. He walked in, started calling me names, and you know this little ugly, ugly ass little boy. <laughs> it's your big ass, right? <laughs> I don't act like I won't come over there and chill. <laughs> so, but it was, the, and even that, that report, yeah. that report was started off camera. So we get on yeah. camera. That's why me and Chat just kept shooting at each other because it was already established. And mm -hmm. he's a cool dude, and and that's the comfort level. So he walk in big, and everybody kisses kisses butt. Shaq, Shaq. When he walked in the hotel, we was at everybody ran out. The damn restaurant stopped. People running out trying to take pictures of him. He get upstairs with us. I mean, what's your big ass doing? Why you got them leather shoes on? Yeah, yeah. So we yeah, start yeah. talking to him like a normal person, and that's what loses people up. Cause I always right. say it, man. You put your pants, your drawers on before your pants, just like <laughs> I. Do. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You're a human being. I can actually see you, you putting have. your pants on before you draw <laughs> so I mean, Some of these nights I've been around you, dog. I, 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 could... be, I be wide open sometimes. <laughs> you ain't been nervous with anybody, though? Like, has anybody made you? Yeah. <sighs> oh. Yes. Yeah. What, something that ain't, we ain't seen yet? Caitlyn. Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> yeah. That, that came out? Thing. Yeah. That was, yeah, Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> see, you just, I ain't see that one. I oh, no, that. I, no, I did see the one with Caitlyn. Yeah. That's when he was on there Pete talking. Davidson. When she was on there talking. Yeah, see, yeah, yeah. See, yeah. see, you heard what you just said? <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> edit that. <laughs> I did. I did. I, did. So, I, did. Like, okay. I saw that one. Because no, she said some real shit because she was like, yo, um, basically... It mm -hmm. seems like it's a trend. Yeah. For everybody was, didn't be embracing the trend. I thought that was going to have way more backlash than it did, but yeah. it did. So the crazy thing is, though, when, <laughs> when we got the opportunity to do it, I was actually in the car with him, and I was like, we can't do it. And he was like, no, man, it's going to be... <laughs> he was like, I was, I was straight up. He's like, it's going to be a great conversation, RC, and I'm going I'm to do this, and I'm going to ask her this. I said, nah, man. I said, because Chan, I was like, you really can't, like, Chan hey, on wow. this one. Like, you got to kind of... I was like, because if we upset... The trans community, I was like, we might not have no show. Right. You know what I mean? And he was like, nah, I'm, I'm going to be straight. I'm going to be straight. I said, but on the other side of it is, is, too, I said, because she's a guest that's not necessary to, like, for our target demographic, I was like, we can't go on there and not be us. You know what I'm saying? Like, I actually don't want Channing or Fred or myself to have to be on a show with a guest where we can't do what we do. Mm -hmm. And we can't do it in the way that people have grown to love the show. And so, like, that was the conversation we were having, and we had it for a day. And then, like, we finally, and we know we Not even up. a day. We was 10 hours when we figured we could do yeah. the show. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, so, yeah. so we had to coach this dude right here, like, no, and you don't know if he's playing or if he's serious. Yeah, he Most said, of the time. He's like, he's like I'm going to ask her this. What nah, kind of meat you got? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Do you still have Come it? Come on, bro. <laughs> no, but, but he, no, just like he, 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 he wussed out. He wussed <laughs> out on that question. Just like y'all see, y'all, you know what I'm saying? Y'all get a look and you got next question this. So we kind of do the same thing. Like, we'll put our finger up or you got it. Every time I put my finger up during that interview, they both be like, No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I got out of line, but I did ask real questions. Nah, you scared good. to ask one question, though. How do you yeah. get to a proper what understanding question? if what we don't have these real conversations, though? You got to have these real what, conversations. What question would you ask, Chan? That you were scared to ask. Um. <laughs> oh, the, 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 like, I, I've. Usually I just flat out come out and say it. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, man, what you got in your drawers? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I say. You but say that usually? I would oh say, yeah, I would say gosh. just like, my thing is like, man, all the sugar, it's funny because all that sugar coat when people are like, so I've heard in the past, I I listened to another interview of yours and try to sneak up on a topic. Mm -hmm. Let me not waste your time. Let me just mm -hmm. ask the question. So in that one, I didn't just ask the question. <laughs> and that RC be like, you real nice with this one, Yeah, you scared, bro. You real nice. <laughs> so yeah, well, People know Chan. Yeah. They'll come in there looking for Chan to, like Shaq. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They come in there and they, they trying to get him open. Because when you break him, you break the ice and the interview just go. Shaq yeah, had a great thing. moment, too, when he, yeah. you know, reflected on his relationship with Shawnee O'Neal. And said, I, I, basically, that's the one that got away, right? Yeah. 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 And, and was, he knows he messed up. Yeah, and even that question, <laughs> like, they, I got backlash about that. Because the way I answered, I was like, you know, you got divorced. You know, you think you could have done something about it. He was like, no. I was like, but it takes two people to get divorced. And they were like, oh, you're blaming his wife for the divorce. No, no. you said two people. 
Yeah, you know, you can't divorce your damn self. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I was like, yeah. So I got backlash from that, but that's what led into that moment mm-hmm. and led into him saying that he, you know, saying he was the problem. Right. And a lot of men won't admit that. So mm-hmm. sometimes you need an uncomfortable situation to get to a a pivotal point in an interview or a pivotal yeah. point in life or just a conversation to get started. So to be honest, they know if I got to be the butt of the joke or the or the, or the bad guy. Like my man to my two men to my right, mm-hmm. I'll be the bad guy. Mm-hmm. But let's get this conversation started. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, no, nobody cares that you want to be the bad guy. Sometimes you just actually <laughs> are a bad guy. Like, like that's like that's two, like that's two different things. Like the fact that you'll ask a question, yeah. like we cool with that. But like we just don't ever really know where it's gonna go. And also, like sometimes I'll be like, dang, Chan, like stop. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like I be looking at people. I'll Maybe like, you need some type of sound effect. Hey, you know, like I'm, I look, <laughs> I, I look at the guests and I'm like, I don't All know if right, they are enjoying this as much as we're enjoying yeah, 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 yeah. this. You know what I mean? And you know, and you y'all y'all do this job better than most people in the world. Y'all also know, like you mentioned the Shaq thing or whatever. Y'all also know when it's like when that's a hit. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, like when, like when Shaq said that, like I immediately was like, that's going. That's going. You know, because right. then yeah. you, you know, and so. Like, the, the crazy thing I could say is, like, I'm just truly, like, starting to learn how it works, you know, because we've done shows that I think are amazing, right? But they haven't necessarily, like, gotten the views. Like, we did a show about mental health awareness, mm-hmm. and we did it uh, with my former teammate, you know, who has a, a company solely focused on black mental health. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I thought, because when we do do something off the beaten path, so many people hit you like, nah, I don't, you know... Y'all, y'all supposed to be down for us. Y'all supposed to be about the community. Don't, you don't get off, don't stray, because they had a situation, the last one, where they started doing NASCAR, and people don't want us to do that. So I'm like, okay, if we do this and we focus on our community and we have something that strictly is, is done so that our people can understand mental health, that stigma goes away, mm-hmm. like, they're going to love it and support it. And it was a great show, and it did, it did fine, but it was like, dang. You know, you're constantly hitting us that this is what we need to be doing. Mm-hmm. We do it, and then mm-hmm. it doesn't pop. And so mm-hmm. now you're trying to figure out, okay, what do, like, what matters, mm-hmm. right? Like, is it is it content, or is it the yes. guests we bring in? Mm-hmm. I, think what you, I think what you said earlier, just creating the best content, yeah. re- re- no matter what that may consist of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes you can't predict it, too. It's mm-hmm. also what people pick up. And then it goes viral. Because sometimes people don't watch the whole thing. They just see a clip. Right. Like Omari Hardwick. That one went crazy mm-hmm. for you guys on um, on social media. People also. taking that out of context, though. Like, they made it sound like he said he only made 150 a show. Yeah. That's not what he... That's not how he... At least I didn't take it like that's that. That's what he said. That's what he said. Yeah. That's what he he said was show. only making 150? Yeah. 150 a show and he you was... Say, he, are, you, are you using the only as if 150 is not enough? That's yeah. Yeah. That's what I he, mean, he felt he deserved more because yeah. he was like the face of stars and stars was huge yeah. because of power right. and yeah. Ghost was power. So I understand that. You yeah. know? It, I think it was everything relative mm-hmm. and I think mm-hmm. we talked about this off air. He had other examples of people that did shows. Right. Angela Bassett, he talked about. 450, yeah, yeah. you know, he brought the Wait, wasn't Angela Bassett on up. network? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's on yeah, 911. Yeah, yeah, that's network television. But he was just I guess the portion, everything's relative, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Everything. You know, you got $100, I I won't I can't take 90, but if you got a million dollars, I need more than 90. Yeah. So you, I think you. he was saying it to that effect where mm-hmm. we know sto- we know power made a bunch of money. Yeah. And I should have made more than one. I, I think that's show. how he was looking gotcha, at, gotcha, at, gotcha, at, gotcha. at it as well. The way that everyone else profited as opposed to mm-hmm. him. And he says it, and he said it after the show and even on the show, though. He was like, I'm so grateful for the show. He said, right. because of that show, now I've moved on and been able to become financially stable in the way I always felt I should. And, mm-hmm. I, you know, everybody has to have that starting point. But just in even and even talking to him like you could see and it's like i think it's just like ball players too though you know what i mean like mm-hmm. you play to a certain level and you do a certain thing you expect that the pay matches and you know that was just a, another one of those though that was just another one of those moments for us that you know like when he said it i didn't think it was a big deal mm-hmm. you know i was like oh you know mm-hmm. you made 150 all right cool we move on and then like that's the thing like you said angela that gets picked up and people start using i thought the comments about his wife would have went a little bit more crazier yeah. too yeah I was fired up about that. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm saying like, like, that's the problem. I was like, oh, he said this? Yeah. I was like, I, what I view is, this the one they going to catch. And yeah. it was like, one, one, one. Yeah. <laughs> now, when you guys did the Rosses, right, did you watch Real Housewives of Atlanta to prepare for that? No? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> Just curious. We don't kind of even watch goes. TV. Yeah, yeah I got So yeah. I, I didn't. And, <laughs> and what's crazy is, and so, you know, 
we're not you guys yet. Like, I'm sure people call, like, to be on this show, and we get calls from certain people, but it's about, like, in trying to build the brand, I'm always trying to find different conversations, right? And I was like, well, you know, we've never had a couple on here. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, so what couple would make sense? And I was like, well, she's a gold medalist. He's a football player. Like, mm -hmm. that couple makes sense. And so when I reached out to them, I didn't know she was on the show. Because oh. <laughs> I did it before the season started. You know what I mean? Just mm -hmm. to, like, have the communication with them. And, and so then when she was on the show, I was like, now it makes even more sense mm -hmm. because, you know, people that are attached to Real Housewives will also want to see or learn more about her. And it just and it ended up uh, working out that way. But I think it was it was so crazy for me. Like, I was just so interested in, like, who she was away from that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just, just a phenomenal woman who had accomplished so much. And, like, that was... Like the dope thing to see to see two people that met when they were like 19 and and still be like that in love and rock with each other that way. I thought it was really dope and hopefully it helps her, you know, going forward because I know she wants to do some more things um, in the media as well. Do you prefer uh, interviewing athletes or entertainers? What do y'all prefer? Don't matter. Whoever's right. interesting. Yeah, good story. You know, good mm -hmm. backstory. And that's even a funny thing. Like we're going to some things thinking Beasley. Mm -hmm. We went to Bees, we knew everybody know him, you know, super cool Bees and all the stories you read about. We were going to go and we thought it'd be a fun one. Mm -hmm. And then we saw the tone kind of come down mm -hmm. when you saw how much was, you know, how much was on his shoulders and in, in his heart. Mm -hmm. But we just try to find people that are interesting. The entertainers, they're more, they entertain. Mm -hmm. So they know they're on set. A lot of the entertainers come with an angle. So you see people that are, that are in front of the camera a lot, they come mm -hmm. with an angle towards the interview. And you got to, we, we got to break their narrative down to now get to the bigger picture of it. Where athletes come in and sit down like we're in the locker room. So mm -hmm. that's the biggest difference I see where entertainers know that what they're doing and athletes come and talk to the boys. Hey, Omari took over. Oh, Omari was punking us. Hey, hey, hey. Omari, we were there. Oh, he's a talker, though. He's a talker. Yeah. Hey, he's a talker. you asking the question, he give you the big hand. Yeah, yeah, he's a talker. Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 Chan, 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 Chan. Okay, okay, well, Mario, you got it. Up. Yeah, we just like I think that's the that's the other part too, is like finding the right type of communicator though, you know, because you know you get the right people like Warren Sapp who is an athlete but also worked in TV. Like we didn't have to work that show, right? Mm -hmm. You know, just because he understood how to communicate, how to tell stories, and I think that's like that's what that's what have, has helped us. You have Shaq, you don't have to do anything. Like, he understands entertainment and those things, you know, and I'm sure as we, you know, continue to move forward, though, and get into more current players, I believe, like, that's where the work comes because they don't necessarily, you know, you almost have to, like, set the question up so they can roll with it and feel comfortable. Whereas, like Channing said, when you have people who understand the entertainment business, like, if, if we could get y'all on, like, literally, we already know. We ask this question, we can sit back. And y'all mm -hmm. y'all just understand it because mm -hmm. y'all do it all the time. Sometimes with the athletes, it's not as easy or simple for them. I, I want to tap back into the Michael Beasley combo and the mental health combo. Was that ever something y'all were able to discuss as athletes, y'all y'all mental health? I think um, when y'all were playing, when you were playing, you don't really pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, you're a warrior. You know, you're just out there competing. You're trying to knock the next guy head off or try to avoid getting your head knocked off. So that conversation, especially when we were playing, yeah. it wasn't as prevalent, you know, as important as it is now. Uh, but on the other side of that, you know, now that we are out of the game, we're able to see these guys that are either committing suicide, they're struggling or going through, you know, these mm -hmm. mental health uh, issues. You know, we, we always try to bring it to the forefront, mm -hmm. you know. And I knew that before the Beasley episode, for example, there were some questions about, you know, his state of, you know, mind. And uh, that was a few uh, angles and a few questions that we were going to ask, but we didn't know it was going to go that deep, mm -hmm. you know. So we always want to, you know, before we would call it a check-in, you know, check on your people, follow mm -hmm. up, see how they're doing, because you just never know. Because e even in our game, is it like 78 or 87 percent of the guys are broke, filed, bankrupt, or divorced within three years of when they're done, and that can put pressure and expedite whatever's going on upstairs. You get into depression, mm -hmm. you know, the anxiety of thinking where the next dollar coming from. Mm -hmm. Because guys don't all, you get in at such a young age, you don't necessarily know which way you're going to go. But the good thing is the NFL provides all of those resources. Really? But All of them. Mm -hmm. If anybody, I heard a comment the other day say, what can we do? We got to, you know, get with you know, the NFL PA and do this and that. They're already doing that. Mm -hmm. The players just got to take the time 
to go take advantage of the resources. They give, they've got money laid out everywhere. So you just got to go. You got to put that in yeah. your everyday routine and say, this is what matters to me. You got to do it now, though, especially for the young guys that's active. They got to do it right now. But you're so much, I think you're so much more evolved. Like, I got to give you some love. I'm going to go Freddie Flowers here. Always. <laughs> Great. Um, you and you starting to speak about mental health made me actually check myself. Mm. And I remember meeting you at ESPN. One, you were way nicer and more polite than I thought you'd be. Just <laughs> Cause listening, listening to the show, I'm like, man, mm -hmm. he's telling people they box trash. And I was like, <laughs> like he's got to be a bad guy. But, mm -hmm. but so, and just like, because, you know, and, I, and I've talked about it with them all the time. You know, like, I grew up, both parents, you know, great childhood. But, like, my parents were really tough. My parents were, my, they worked hard as hell, and they said, you know what, like, my mama told me, you know, like, depression is uh, something that black, a black man can't afford, mm. right? Or, or, or sadness or, or different things like that. And so, you know, there were times where I could have been battling, battle, battling things and just not, not let myself accept it, mm. right? Because to me, it was unacceptable. And I've had to learn as I've gotten older to be sympathetic to those things mm -hmm. and to try to understand that, one, not everybody sees it like me or is is built like me and that these things do truly exist not only in our culture but in the world period mm -hmm. and um you know from listening to you uh my homeboy monday and monday said something monday right yeah, ryan yeah. ryan said something on his episode that i thought was so deep he said what people got to understand is what's good for black people can be good for all people you know, and so I had to truly start start getting out of that mindset of, nah, you don't have to tough your way through everything. Like, mm -hmm. you can talk to people. Like, you can. You are also dealing with things. Because, like, when I played, like, I was an undrafted dude, you know. I spent my first four years trying not to be cut. Mm. You know what I mean? And and when those things happening happened, because I grew up with a mom and I went to church every day, it wasn't, you know, you need to talk to somebody or you're dealing with something. I just got on my knees or I got in that book. You know, like that was the way I dealt with it. So I am still like at, at, at my age, like I am still learning. And so honestly, when we have a, a Michael Beasley and are able to have that conversation, it truly helps me more than anything, because it starts to let me know that these things are real. Um, you know, you have to deal with them. People have to deal with them. And it's OK, because I truly felt like it wasn't even in my parenting. Mm -hmm. Like I've had to adjust you know as well but I, I think and i say i'm the caveman of the crew they're way more evolved than i am and i've learned it now you know the mental health awareness ain't been about 10 years now that it's really come to the forefront mm -hmm. maybe less especially in our community yeah, yeah. so yeah. you playing ball you don't grind your whole life to be the one percent of one percent you break your finger tie it to the next one you dislocate your shoulder pop it back in and go play so we doing all this on the field to play ball to make money you you the best of the best you woke up sad Mm -hmm. Like I remember some guys just being yeah. like, "Man, I'm down," and you look at, "Bro, we got, let's go! Like it's time to play." This mm -hmm. is a barbell on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Oh no, 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 no! Yeah. We got to like, this, there's no off, there's no replacement for you, and he's worse than you. That's why he's your damn backup. Mm -hmm. So I think like that barbaric side of football, especially you know basketball things are different, but football exactly. Physically, I have to see something wrong with you. If I see your your bone pop out of your ankle, mm -hmm. okay, bro, you can take a couple weeks off. You're depressed. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Yeah. Like what is and I didn't when I played, I didn't understand it. And I knew guys were going through stuff. I tell the story like Junior Seau, who took his own life. That was my homeboy. That was my dude. And I remember the day I saw it, I called his phone and went to voicemail and I just broke down in tears. And that it started clicking to me, talking to Ricky Williams a lot, post career. Mm -hmm. And Ricky explained it to me. Like I started really seeing like this is this could be bigger than a torn ACL. This could be life or mm -hmm. death. Torn mm -hmm. ACL, you miss nine months. This could be life or death when you talk to the mental side. So I have come around from my yeah. barbaric and my, you know, caveman ways to really respecting. And when somebody says they're not feeling good, hey, I need some time. Let me call my homeboy and really mm -hmm. talk with him mm -hmm. and really break this down. So yeah. I hopefully that hopefully if my old country ass can do it, mm -hmm. the whole league and the, the world will open up, especially black people will open mm -hmm. up and understand this could be bigger than something you can see. Something you can't see might be a bigger even or something you can watch walking walking towards you in the hallway. I wonder if it's easier to play football than it is a sport like basketball because of the fact, you know, they always say hurt people hurt people. You can actually go out there <laughs> and hurt somebody and you get, get paid for it. That's what you're supposed to do. Like, yeah. I wonder. To, 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 you, to take, to your point, to take a human being's physical person and not be concerned with it, if I hit him in his knee and it pops backwards and so, a bone pops out, mm -hmm. 
Good job. You'll get patted on the back. Mm -hmm. That was a hell of a hit. You yeah. knock a dude to sleep. That was a hell of a hit, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do did I do do you have to disconnect yourself from almost humanity wow. to go out there on Sunday? Because wow. I can't look. I can't if me, if me well me and Freddie, he was always a player. When I played Freddie, I couldn't look at Freddie as Fred T, my homeboy, my dog. We right. both gators. Right. You know what I'm saying? I know I know right. he got kids. I yeah. know he's man. I know he's a happy, you know, happy dude. If I get a chance to knock him to sleep, I have to do it. That's mm -hmm. my job. So Damn. I had to disconnect myself from the relationship and disconnect myself from human beings. I'm not walking in public, Damn. busting my head in nobody's chest down the, down the seafood aisle. But when I get <laughs> on the football field, the hell with you, the hell with you, the hell with you. If I don't do my job, I'm getting cut, I, and did I'm going to lose did my you, chest. Did you put that much thought into it though because i it wasn't like i ain't have a th i played since i was four mm -hmm. and it was just always the same thing you know like mm -hmm. like we gonna play and it is it was what it was so i'm backyard playing throw up tackle with the homeboys yeah. yeah i'm gonna try to smash you through this fence and you know hopefully your mama go cook tonight and we just go all eat together and i think i don't know man i just think like 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 for us you know i tell people all the time like i only wanted one job my whole life and that was to play football and i did it for free for so long that when they would pay me, like I was like, oh, this is this is what it's supposed to be, mm -hmm. and that was I think that was that also played into it though. Like we don't get to call out, like we don't have holidays, mm -hmm. right? You working on Christmas, you working on Thanksgiving, days. like you don't you don't have <clears throat> sick days. When I was when I was sick, you know what I mean? Like when I was sick, I went to work every day. I couldn't stand up straight for a month, but I went to work every day because they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. Because that's what you're supposed to do. And about eleven o'clock every day, they'd send me home, you know, because I had a fever or whatever. And so I think. You know, we were just always taught that if you ain't dead, you got to be here. Mm -hmm. And so I think for us, though, Charlamagne, that crossed over mentally and emotionally mm -hmm. as well. It's like, I can't go in here and tell these people I don't feel good or I don't have it. And I think that part played into it. And the the physicality of it, to me, was was what defined you. You know what I mean? Like, I, I felt like, like I respect, I, I can say this, I respect tougher individuals more than I respect talented individuals. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, it was some dudes that, like, this dude right here is one of the most talented humans I've ever played against. Like, you couldn't touch him in a phone booth, but he was also a dog, and, like, that was what I admired about him. And I think when people constantly, in our locker, in our, lock, in our world, when people constantly applaud you for toughness, it makes you want it more. Like, when I would put people to sleep, you know what I mean? Like, they would love it. And I was like, oh, that's all I got to do is just run my face into his face and get up first. I'll do that every single snap. Damn. Because that's what they're going to pay me for. Mm -hmm. How does you think that plays into, like, parenting and how you raise your kids? Ooh, I think um, <laughs> it's definitely different. That's a good yeah. question. <clears throat> with, with the sports, I mean, that's, that's repetition, you know, since we were, you know, this big. And um, you just, you know, you program, you get used to it. As a parent... Shit, man, you gotta. It's trial by error. You know, you gotta. You, you see examples, right? For whether it's your family or your your dad or mom. Well, I come from a single household, so I was just raised by all women. You know, so and now I'm raising boys. Mm -hmm. So for me, I know I have to be tough on them because what society will eat. You know, I always tell them society is waiting to pounce on you and tear your ass up. You know, and then they get another side from other people. That that have been out there in the trenches that tell them, look, you need to go back and visit your dad hometown, or I'll even take them back. So I let them see that, but I also let them understand that they can be vulnerable, mm -hmm. and you know, and be sensitive and, and and be okay. But I try to tell them this is when you need to be this way, versus this is when you need to be be this way. But it, a lot of times, I learn, I still learn from my kids. Right. I learn a ton of shit from my kids. So. Um, and I try to take the football out of it. People always look. Your, your kids, you got boys. You need to put them in sports. No, I need to expose them to everything that's and let right. them decide. Yeah. And that's that for me. I believe uh, with the kids and with relationships, though, mm -hmm. when you're paid and you're praised for physically dominating another grown man your whole life, the domestic abuse. Mm -hmm. So on the football field, right. oh, you talk trash to me. They're gonna snap this ball, and I can literally come and choke you for ten seconds. And they're mm -hmm. gonna blow the whistle, mm -hmm. go back to your huddle. Some, like RC said, they're smart ball players and they're dummies. Mm -hmm. The dummy can't turn the switch off, right. and that's mm -hmm. what people use: turn the switch off. Right. So now you get hot on the football field. I'm gonna physically dominate you. Mm -hmm. You and your wife are arguing. Are you gonna go there with her? And I think a lot of people that do that, I, 
don't blame it on football, but I think some guys can't separate life from football because they've seen so much praise from being able to physically dominate. Even with the Adrian Peterson thing when he, when he whooped his son, mm -hmm. you don't have to hit a baby that hard. You don't have to hit a baby. But was he taught that? Was, you know, did it he happened just to him. go That's overboard? Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? We all so, had to pick a switch, especially if you're from the country. I, I'm about yeah, to say, yeah, I'm but sure. I mm -hmm. don't think, I think it's more his upbringing than football, than football with that. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of them domestic violence cases, because I see dudes get mad even now. Homeboys I know that play ball, like they get mad and they start breathing and balling their fists. Bro, who you going to hit? Right. You, I want you to hit me then. You want to hit somebody, hit mm -hmm. me. Because I think that separation. So with the kids, I think, if you're if you're a good-hearted person, you'll be good. But I do think some ball players can't turn the switch off when they leave the field. I think, and I also though, it can work in the opposite. You know, I know for me, like I was, I always felt like I had to because of, obviously you can see I'm not the biggest tiny one here. Thing. I'm not a tiny little thing, and I'm not gonna <laughs> get abducted either. <laughs> yeah, I'm so scared he's gonna get kidnapped one day. <laughs> <laughs> he be wanna walk around and be like, oh, see, call me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that <laughs> shit real. One time, me and Lil Duval, listen, me and Lil Duval was walking through Times Square. You guys got kidnapped? No, but this dude walked up to Duval, and this dude was like, yo, do you, hey, hey, young man, do you know what Toys R Us is? <laughs> I was like, man, I'm a grown ass man. But he was, and the guy was dead serious. But see, no, he, so one time, man, we go out to eat, and we are a traveling band, right? Because we travel to to go to our guests. That's how we've been able to get a lot of people. And so, man, like, we eat, we're in Nashville, and so we go to a spot and we eat, and like most, like, well, not like, uh, we don't know how to leave. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, every dinner turns into, like, a party. It's like a mm -hmm. four-hour dinner. We have a good time. You know, we eat, we drink. So we walk out out of the back room, and nobody's there. Like, nobody's there. So we like, okay, we did too much. So I'm walking in front <laughs> of Channing, and he's screaming my name. Ryan! <laughs> So I turn, I say, what? He's like, I want you to walk closer, man, so nobody don't take you. <laughs> it was dark in the restaurant. We had to go down the alley. I'm like, Ryan, man, get closer, man. I got bad knees. I can't run that fast when they grab me. That's hey, sweet. That's not, I'll be worried about yeah. it. That's not sweet. That is not sweet. And that's and so, like, that's what, and, like, the whole thing has been cool, but, like, I was trying to get to the parent thing. The I just thing. switched it all off. So I still parenting. This is a different form. Yeah, it's just for me. Yeah. So like I, like I'm very, and he makes fun of me because like I don't cuss a lot. So like I spell cuss words sometimes and stuff like that. But as people in like my regular life, like take it up an octave, I take it back, right? Because I don't ever, I don't ever want to be in that position, you know. And like I'm not a, I'm not an arguer. As mm -hmm. much as I debate on TV and I like to go back and forth, if I know we have a disagreement that involves emotion. I try to scale it back. Like I try to talk about logic and I try to speak about facts because I know, like I know for me, it's either I'm here or I want to fight. You know, I'm like, I don't have a lot in the middle. You know what I mean? And so I think what football taught me was how to understand that. And then like, I was, like I said, I was raised by great parents. And I think with, with kids, you know, it is like Fred's right. It is trial and error. And I have girls, I have girls and a boy, you know, and my son's been on the show and I was different with my son mm -hmm. than I was with my daughters. And I still am. Like, me and my daughter, and I hate even talking about it, my daughter, 17, and she's like, she's gonna mm -hmm. kill me. She's like talking to like her first, so like her, like the first time she's really like talking to a young man, right? And in my town in Baton Rouge, like obviously like the kids, they know me, you know, so a lot of them are like kind of scared. And so she told me she was talking to me, like, well, it's time for us to go on a date. Right. And I take her on a date because I want her to know what it's supposed to look like, that he's supposed to pull out your chair and mm -hmm. he's supposed to be respectful and he's supposed to, you know, allow you to be first and all these different things. And because I don't want it to be a surprise to her. And with my son, I was different. And his mom would always be like, why do you make him do all these things that you don't make the girls do? I said, because the way I see it, if he's going to be married and if he's going to have children, he's going to have to do things that he does not want to do. That's right. But he's going to have to do them. And so if it was something that he wanted in life, which was ball, he plays at Arizona State now, I would make him get up at 6 in the morning mm -hmm. and go work out before school. And he'd be like, well, and his mom would be like, well, his friends ain't doing that. Well, I'm not his friend's dad. I said, but if he has a job when he gets older or if he wants to do a certain thing, he might have to go through this grind that's not necessarily comfortable in order to get what he wants. And so I think we all raise children differently. Um but I don't necessarily believe that that football affects that, and I think that's another part of, of like of like that box. Like right. even Channing, we're talking about, you know, the domestic abuse. Like if 
one guy does it or if, or if two guys does it, then they give it to the whole lot of you, right? Or the same way we talk about parenting, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and, 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 and black dads and fathers. Like, I don't have a homeboy. I do not have a friend or a teammate I play with that I'm close to that don't take care of his kids. Right. No, right. They, they might not all be the best boyfriends or the best husbands, but I don't have a homeboy that does not love his kids with his whole heart. But they don't. We don't talk about those things. Mm -hmm. Always, there's absentee fathers and athletes don't take care of their kids. And so I think sometimes we get credited with things that aren't about all of us or the whole of us because of a few. When it comes to your girl, uh, your daughter's uh, boyfriend, you take him in the backyard with a football, like you know, let's go. Nah, you know what I mean. Nah, and what's crazy is he mm -hmm. actually uh, the the cool part about like now is because my son went to school my son went to school in Baton Rouge too and so most of the, the kids he's not even a big human most of the kids really <laughs> respect him too yeah, yeah and yeah. so it's, and so it helps but nah, like I don't I don't do like the only thing I'll do is like if when they come over I just answer the door in a tank top let them you know, see. Just let, let them know. Like, Pops got them gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got like, you, got it's you, still, got it's you. still here. Like, it ain't go nowhere. <laughs> or, what? 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 Because <laughs> <laughs> you ain't even walk around and he got them little funny 50 cent takes off. <laughs> oh, the junior boy. Thick ass shoulders. <laughs> Every time he be get drunk, he be like, man, where, where do you get those anymore? <laughs> <laughs> you know 50? No, first off, crazy. it's not 50. They're, they're like kind of designer. Right, and you don't know nothing about that because you were because you were mids. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I shop at Walmart. Yeah, yo. <laughs> my, my my last question has has your opinion has all y'all opinion changed of the media since you started the podcast and what what they do for a living? The Stephen A. Smiths of the world, the you know Kendrick Perkins, those guys, Skip Bayless. I think what I, I love, love what I love about <laughs> those, those three guys mm -hmm. again, like Channing, they're black and white. They're, they're, they're doing a job, number one, so you have to realize what they're doing. Uh, but they're very transparent. Mm -hmm. You know, people say they're biased, they're puppets because they work for network or whatever. You know, they speak their mind. They, they speak their mind. Um, I think Stephen A is more boisterous, you know, and outspoken mm -hmm. with his and he's his delivery. No, nah, he's, he's, right. he's amazing. He's, you know, when he did our show, he was great. And I was like, I respect that. Uh, so... Certain media have agendas. Mm -hmm. Certain guys you could deal with, they don't have agendas. I played in the market. Guys had agendas all the time because it was a small market. They tried to, they way back then, they was trying to find clickbait, mm -hmm. you know, and ship it out to a bigger uh, na national news. But, yeah, I, I respect those guys, man. Uh, <laughs> but we're, we're different. You know, we're short format, and we really just try to give it to our guests so they can actually, you know, direct. And we, we direct and lead the interview. Look for certain narratives, but we we let them tell their story. Um, I would say just like we talked about ball players that are good and bad. There's humans, there's police, there's teachers that are good and bad mm -hmm. teachers. Mm -hmm. There's good media members and there's bad media members. Mm -hmm. And that's when you play, you hate the media because you think y'all are trying to get you. But I'm now being on this side, now talking to Stephen A. Smith, now really sitting down with people and saying there are people that want to get a story out and want to educate, and there's people that want to look clickbait. All they want is all they want is some likes. If they get mm -hmm. likes, it's what it is. So they're gonna put whatever out there to get likes. So there's good side and bad side of me. And I think, I think I'm gonna ride with that forever. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the other piece of it, and both of you guys do different things on different platforms, mm -hmm. is every platform's different. Right, 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 like right, right. I know what they, I know what they need from me mm -hmm. when I'm on there, 100. percent Like I know I'm never going to say something I don't mean. I'm never not going to be Ryan Clark. But I know what I'm here for. I, I, I know what the job is, mm -hmm. right? And I know how to do that job. And in doing the podcast, like, we're actually, like, not doing a job. You know, and I, and I don't know if it's, like you said, the way the money works, mm -hmm. right? Because, like, it's not like we sit down and I know that direct deposit going to hit the same way mm -hmm. every week. And that's what I'm doing. I think because because we've taken, on, taken it on in, in the way that we have, I actually, like, don't feel like the media. Um, it, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily feel like a show. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the guests sit down and eventually like you forget the cameras on. Right, like, right, you know, because right. we're not we're not being directed. You know, the, the questions you ask, like unless Alicia texts us during and like, you know, we need to get to this. So we want to hit to this. Like we're just having a conversation like Charlemagne might be talking and I may not have even had that thought. And he may hit on something. And I. I follow the way, and mm -hmm. as soon as he's finished talking, I ask him, okay, well, explain this or tell me about that. And so I think that's what's been, for, for me, it, it's truly given me a, a love for, for, for media a, a little bit more because, and I say this all the time, um, 
and most of the time, because I'm just talking about football, I have not helped anybody doing that job, right? 2020, I did, and mm-hmm. things like that. But I have, talking about the Cowboys, I've not helped anyone. I, I've not done a piece of media there that has changed anybody's life or they've learned anything other than that Dak Prescott is this. But you're talking but, about Cowboy fans, too. They yeah. ain't never going to learn. Well, that's, that, that's very <laughs> true. But like, it, Could you stop talking about fans? Like I'm not saying, y'all, they haven't won. Y'all are still in the 90s. We're going to win the Super Bowl like, this year. Like, 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 no, <laughs> y'all, y'all going to be really bad this you know year. <laughs> Every year, they like, this is our year. I'm sticking to my gun. We're going to win the Super Bowl this year. Y'all going to Jerry Jones going to make so much money. But y'all going to be terrible. Y'all going to win the East. Damn, you don't know think we come out the NFC East? No. Mickey and you think about him role playing? Philly? <laughs> Philly going. Yeah, do you ever go to games? <laughs> no, I haven't been to a game. I've never been to the stadium. You never been to a game? No, no, no. I've never been to the stadium. Well, you need to go to a game, man. You're a superstar. I'm going to go to one. You can go throw the football like Conor McGregor. No, I'm going to go to one. They, they sent me a whole autograph football with Dak and Zeke and all them before. But you no, know, my daddy tased somebody at a game. At a Cowboy game? At, yeah, at MetLife Stadium on 9 11. He tased a Marine. He had, how did he get a taser into the game? He's from South Carolina. He ain't know. He just had it on his his, his, his hip. He just walked right in with it. And then he got into it with the Marine because he didn't stand for the anthem. And you know. It, and the craziest part is that Charlene was actually at that game, but not sitting with his dad. Because I know him. <laughs> we, have boxing. <laughs> we have boxing. We have boxing. He would not bring it. his dad in there. He no, I'm like, nah, I'm like, nah, I'm like, nah, he don't and know And then that. we saw a scuffle happening in the stands. And we were like, somebody's <laughs> fighting. Oh, you were dad. there too? Yeah. How was it? We was there. Bro. 9-11. It was like 10, 11 years ago. He had to, he had to walk in too, like he was supposed to be there with it on his Yeah, yeah. Like he was like he wasn't even thinking that I gotta sneak it in. He's like, nah. I'm Come on, man. When you from the out. country, your daddy always say keep something on you. You know, whether it's a blade, some brass knuckle, yeah, something, right. and he just he had his taser on him. So. I'm sure you guys have learned a lot of things about each other too, just doing oh. this podcast. Oh. You know, Ooh. Tanny was just talking about this cat, and it made him think of <laughs> himself in the bedroom. What? <laughs> yeah, what? you know, we role story? play. Yeah, oh, my, yeah, 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 yeah. When you role play as a cat, yeah, yeah. Kitty, okay. kitty stuff and all that, too. And I've been here having to look at this cat the whole time. It's messing yeah, that was, up over that here. That wasn't one I kept in my brain. After, you know what I mean? I was like, you know, there's a lot of other useful information I that, got from the podcast. That is not useful. Yeah. That is not, that is not <laughs> useful. But it was a moment that went viral. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, he no. does. He's, he's, I ask him, like, when the show's, like, we about, got like, what, maybe like three months. I was like, bruh, did you talk this much on the last show? Cause, I, cause every week, not every week, something he said was like going viral. I was like, "Did you talk this much?" And he was like, "Nah, not really." Mm-hmm. I was like, "Dog, you're just like you're a star." You know what I mean? And, and like yeah. he's and like that's what's been that's what's been been dope about him is to know that he actually is exactly like that. That we he kind of like tones it down a little bit for the show actually from a storytelling. <laughs> yeah. They they be scared when we when we out. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, they be worried about me when they out. Like, you know, you know y'all sit around chilling or whatever, drinking. And I stand up to go to the bathroom and Ryan be like, see, where you headed? Where you going, see? Yeah. And they be worried about me. Because, yeah, I just kind of float through life and just enjoy every second of, every second of God gives me the breeze. So, But just what, what I learned about, you know about a dude as a ball player, as a professional. Then you get to know him personally every single week. You together two, three days straight through the day. We together. Unless we're sleeping, we're together. <laughs> So you get to know him as a man. You get to hear him talk to his wife on the phone. You get to hear him talk to his kids. We get to meet R.C.'s kids. Mm-hmm. I talk to his daddy more than I talk to him. Yeah. Me and R.C.'s daddy type. We, he yeah. checks on me about once a week. So, like, when you get to know a man like that, the respect goes through the roof when you get to know right. him as a human being and not just a ball player or not even a media member, mm-hmm. as right. a man. And that's what I knew. I knew both of them, respected both of them, but now being around this much, man, the respect goes through the roof. Like, they're, they're family now. Yeah. They're family now. Man, I think what y'all do is so necessary between y'all and all the smoke. Like, I, I, I don't think we'd be having these conversations with athletes and about athletes in this way if it wasn't for these kind of platforms. Because I don't think they would ever go on ESPN or Fox Sports or anywhere and be that open and vulnerable as they are with y'all. So, but Thank you, man. All the smoke, us, who's the other great ones? Um, million, million dollar worth of game. Absolutely. Yeah. All yeah. them got. We wouldn't be there without y'all. Yeah, it's real. Yeah. That's Think real, about man. the platform y'all set up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Y'all got three people, smart people, sit yeah. down, communicate, mm-hmm. interview folks. Like, y'all y'all taught us this game. Yeah. And y'all mm-hmm. didn't know each other, right? No, we all no, knew yeah. each other. Yeah, we all knew each other. Okay. Yeah, knew each other. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so y'all taught us this game. So all the love that you've given us and the respect, and we appreciate it. Without the Breakfast Club, I believe there's no yeah. all the smoke, there's no pivot. There's no million dollars worth of game. There's not wow. that. Y'all set the standard, that. and we appreciate it. Yeah. Well, Thank see, y'all, everything man. Everything happens for a reason. So Absolutely. The Pivot Podcast, y'all got that popping after 
you know, things didn't work out in the previous situation, and it's even better. Well, Make sure you. y'all subscribe to the Pivot Podcast. Fred Taylor, Channing Crowder, Ryan Clark, thank y'all for coming, brother. Man, thank Appreciate you guys it. for having us. I, by the it. way, I just want to say, this has been like a dream of mine, and I didn't want to say it in the beginning. So thank you all so much for, for having us. <laughs> no, for real. Like, this, was, this was like on my bucket list of media things to do, so I appreciate it. Done. Thank it's the you. Breakfast Club. <laughs>